Celtics rolled the Mavericks 107 to 89. Looked like it was over in the first quarter as they built up a 17 point lead. Dallas made it interesting, cutting it to eight later on, but it was all Boston all the time. The 18 point win matches the biggest game one win of an NBA final since 2017. That's when the Warriors topped the Cavaliers 113 91. Stat of the day brought to you by Panini America. This is where we overreact. Every sport, when something like this happens, you go, God, I just don't see Dallas winning four games against this Celtics team. Now, I picked Boston, but I don't want to overreact and say this can't go six or seven. The X Factor, Kristaps Porzingis, was great last night. The X Factor for Dallas, Kyrie Irving was not. And Kyrie, well... Kind of gave an open invitation to the Celtics fans to uh, welcome him in game two. You know, being in this environment, um, you know, I'm used to it at this point. Um, you know, early in my career, there was a, a different uh, relationship that I had with Boston, just being able to come here, be settled with a veteran group. Now I'm here as the veteran. Um, over the past few years, just experiencing the playoffs here, um, even regular season, it's, it's been the same thing. I thought it was going to be a little louder in here, um, but I'm expecting the same things uh, going into game two, crowd trying to get me out of my element, uh, my teammates out of my element. But again, the energy's got to be focused towards the game. Yeah, don't encourage them. And if I'm a Celtic fan, I'd be cheering for him. He's helping you win a title the way he played last night. Luka Doncic had one assist. Now he had 30, had 10 rebounds, but one assist. They didn't even have double-digit assists last night. Now, this is where you can overreact and say they can't stop Boston. Okay, maybe they can't. You know, Boston, if they're going to play great defense like this, they are going to win the title. Their offense was historically great this year. Now you throw in the defense, that's what makes them so dangerous here. you got perimeter defenders. Uh, Brown and Tatum are, you know, long you know, threes, and they're able to uh, defend inside and outside. Throw in Porzingis as well, Al Horford. They're a good defensive team, but the offense, the offense is what's historically great. As for Dallas, you probably look at this and go, okay, they can't be this bad in game two, which is true. They can't be this bad unless they are, and then they're in real deep trouble. Luke is going to get his points, but if he doesn't get his assist, now that – it's not his fault he only had one assist. You have to make the shots if you get the ball, and they didn't shoot well last night. But it was Boston, and uh, Boston early and often, and I would expect the same kind of game plan that they had. They know Luka's going to score. The question is, can you keep everybody under wraps so nobody gets squirrely and puts up 30 as well? Uh, what's the poll question today there, Seton O'Connor? Last night was an anomaly or this series? Oh. Is that the way this rest of this series is going to go, where the Celtics just roll, or was it just hmm. one of those nights for the Celtics? Well, I think this is how Boston plays. Now i got to find out how Dallas is going to play against Boston. This is what Boston does. They have so many different offensive weapons, and they play really good defense. They played really good defense last night. Do I think Dallas will be better? Yes, and I don't want to overreact and say they may not win a game. I still see Boston winning this. They're a better team. But that doesn't mean Kyrie can't have an unbelievable night and with Luka and P.J. Washington. You know, then they're role players. But it's going to take, a you know, a total team effort to beat Boston. And, you know, here's the other thing. Tatum and Brown didn't have to do much last night. It was really about Kristaps Porzingis coming off the bench, giving them an offensive lift. He had three block shots. That, to me, I'd be, you know, you can say, well, Dallas, look, Kyrie didn't play well, and Luka had one assist. Tatum and Brown were like, okay, you know, we're just kind of going through layup lines here. Well, Tatum, for sure. Jalen Brown was phenomenal last night. He, he was playing out of his mind. Jason yeah, but, Tatum was sort of out there. But numbers-wise, would they score 22, Brown scored like 22 points? So it wasn't anything where you go, oh, my gosh, he put up 40. Yeah, but he had some monster blocks. He had some... He, he had a hell of a night for himself. Yeah, I, if I'm the Mavericks, I'm looking at like, is Kristaps Porzingis really going to be this hot again and beat us? Probably not. 
No, but then you're going to have somebody else who can. Um, you know, can he be? And and I would run him as much as I could. Whoever he's guarding, I would run him and just see you know how healthy he's going to be for the entire series. Uh, you know, same thing with Luca. I don't think Luca's a hundred percent. I think that knee is bothering him. So I would do the same thing. Different defenders on him, different looks on him, and uh, be prepared. You know, because I think what happens in game two is really going to set the stage for you know, how long this series goes. We'll get to phone calls coming up. Here is Kristaps Porzingis talking about coming off the bench last night. From day one, I came here and I said, like, I'll do whatever it takes to help this team win, right? And I think it was um, this situation, you know, it, it made sense. And, uh, and I didn't care. I didn't care. Uh, I knew I could prepare to come off the bench, which is something different for me. Um, and that's what I did. And, and stepped into that role and, and embraced it. And... Mm-hmm. And uh, and had a good game.